Hello, I'm so glad you've met me back at my sewing machine. It's right over there. And today we're going to talk about binding, making binding. Cubby did a tutorial or something the other day, and she had a bunch of requests to show how to cut binding. Well, it just so happens that we got this new ruler in. It's called Bias Binding Simplified. You should tell the story about the ruler, how you saw it and we all went crazy about it. Okay, uh, I saw it and they all went crazy about it. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it and you could order it, remember? Yeah, yeah, I, I saw it. Um, I was, I'm a big fan of the Creative Grid rulers. So anytime they have a tutorial or something new, I go and watch the video, and uh, I have probably six rulers just like this one at home. Six of them, probably. <laughs> All different companies. But what makes this one so exciting and different is it shows you how to fold the fabric to get the maximum number of strips out of your um, yardage. So, let's look at this. Let's just look at this um, ruler for a minute. Again, it's called the Bias Binding Simplified. Not Simplify. I watch a lot of NCIS. If you, But I'm going to lay this down right here on this uh, fabric. So, if you could come in close, mm -hmm. uh, Peter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing I want you to notice is that it will cut a 2-inch strip, a two and a quarter inch strip, or a two and a half inch strip. This is two and a half. So if you are wanting to cut a lot of uh, strips like jelly roll strips, right here's the perfect width because that's a two and a half width right there. So you could cut uh, two and a half uh, inch strips. So that's really good to know. So then, I don't know how you cut your binding, I always like to cut my binding two and a quarter because I use a very thin batting. So then go on down over here and right here on this black line right here, it says two and a half inch bias strips cut from 40 inch wide fabric. Fabric usually comes 45. So uh, you're gonna cut the salvages off. A half a yard will give you 255 inches. And then a three-fourths of a yard will give you 375 inches. And then a yard will give you 495 inches. Now, if you cut yours like I do, two and a quarter, then it's the same deal. You're going to cut off the salvages, and then it tells you right here, for a half a yard, that's what you get for a third of a, three fourths of a yard, and then a yard. Is that just spectacular? Then if you want two inches, it's the same deal. I don't know anybody that does two inches. I've never heard of two inch binding, but I suppose there's a, a reason for it. What about like a mini quilt? Like a mini mini quilt? Would you do two inch binding on a real small mini mini quilt? Well, the thickness would be the same no matter how little the quilt is if you're using the same batting as you would in a big quilt. So it's the thickness. It's not the size of the quilt that would matter. It's the thickness of the quilt and how much binding you want to show. Oh, I gotcha. See? So um, anyway, so that's what intrigued me about this ruler is it's got all the information you want right on the ruler. You don't have to go cut for another piece of paper. Wowza, that's pretty nice. How often do you cut bias binding? Well, if you're making eight quilts a year, then probably eight times a year. If you only make four quilts a year, you're only cutting binding four times. And then by the time you get and you do one, you have forgotten everything by the time you get the next quilt done. Peter's raising his hand. He knows exactly what I'm saying. Hallelujah and amen. Everybody forgets how to cut it because you just don't do it that often, okay? Now, I do it a lot because I make a lot of quilts, but uh, when I found this ruler, I thought, hey, I'm not going to have to think. It's all right here for me. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the salvage. And it says it likes for the, uh, for the uh, fabric to be 40 inches wide. So what I've done here is I've laid it on my mat. Now this is a half a yard. Half a yard of fabric right here. So this is going to yield me a lot of, how do you know how much you need? How, much, how do you know how to calculate how much you need? Well, you take and you measure your quilt. If this was my quilt right here, I'd measure, 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 measure. But really what I'd do is I'd measure this and I'd measure that and I'd take that times two. Okay? So that tells me how many inches of binding I need. So now what I'm going to do is this iron on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up with my, with my mat here, and I'm going to cut it at 20 inches, just simply because the ruler said it liked 40 inches of width of fabric, and that gives me, I'm cutting off that salvage. So there's that. You could save that and use that for scraps of some kind if where, you wanted to. Where's your soup kettle? Oh, it's down there. I don't have enough oh. room anymore. Oh, for the soup kettle. I don't have any, more, any room anymore. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to press that seam out. That seam where it's been folded on the bolt, you know. Is that a must? Uh, I would. What I happens would. if you don't? Uh, you have a nice uh, strip with some folds in it. <laughs> and I'm using this. Is that why press. I get those? Is that why I get those little quarter-inch jagged edges along the side Maybe. where that fold was? Yeah, yeah. Because I've had that happen if before. If it's not folded flat, yeah, you're going to get a little dog leg. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'm going to press that out, and I use some best press, because usually that seam, where it's been folded before it's rolled on the bolt, is pretty stubborn. And you know what? You have the remedy. You can use the best press, and I just press it until it's dry. And look, no more seam. Isn't that awesome? Perfectly flat. It's gone. It's gone, baby. It's gone. I'm going to fold it back again, fold it in half, I'm going to get my ruler out. Now, I was practicing with this ruler because it's a new thing to me, new, new When to did me. you get it? I just got it Monday, uh, Friday. Wow. So then, I laid it down to cut and I put it right on, <laughs> do, do look we, at this. Hold on, do we have more than one Dawn? More than one what? More than one of these. Oh, yeah, we have a bunch okay. of them. So right here was the line I laid it on, because I saw this two and a half, and I thought that was the two and a half line. Well, actually, that's the two-inch line. So this is a perfect opportunity for me to use my ruler stickers. Remember these? I showed you these. Well, I, did I, I show them in these? these? In, you showed them in, in our ruler the, video. Oh, in the ruler video. Okay. Well, what these are are little arrows. They're little stickers that are arrows. And what I'm going to do is, see, I'm going to put my arrow so that I don't accidentally cut on that line. So what line is that? That's the two-inch line. And I want to cut the two and a quarter inch line because quarter. this, the edge of the ruler is two and a half. Okay. So it doesn't really have a line, and that's what was getting me confused, because I was thinking this was the two and a half line, but it wasn't. So I'm going to put my little arrows there. Now I'm not going to make a mistake. I'm going to leave these out here so you can see what these are. Mm -hmm. They come in all different colors, but they're pretty nice. I really like them. Do we like sell them. these here at the yeah, shop? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Do we have more than one available? Yeah, we do. <laughs> It seems like what happens is we go to show something and we have like two or one. Yeah. But we can always order. You know, we can always order more. 
We're glad that you like stuff that we show. Well, if you want to get yours before everybody else, when you see, as soon as you see this video, just go ahead and call yeah. while you're still watching it so you yeah. can make sure that you get your handy rulers and stickers and right. stuff. Right. Jennifer will be happy to take your order. Right. So now I'm going to have this ruler right in front of me. And it's, I've already got my thing set out. Now, it doesn't want it folded. It wants it to be straight. Oh. Okay? Okay. See, look, right there it showed me. Start with a rectangle of fabric. It doesn't say to fold it. Nope. So it wants it all spread out. So if this piece was big, you know, I'd have to have it all flat. Then the ruler says to take this corner up. And make a triangle. Bring that corner up and make a nice triangle. See that? Right there on the ruler. I'm not guessing. It's right there. Then it says take this corner and fold it down like that. And then this probably is the trickiest fold, okay? What I want you to do is to take this corner and bring it down to meet this edge right here. So all your folds, all your bias folds are right here on the edge. One, two, three, four. Let me do that again. It's like a burrito. It is kind of like a burrito. You're right. So the first thing I'm going to do from the bottom, I'm going to take this up. Now, by the time I get back to binding another quilt, I will have forgotten all about how to fold this. So what do I have to do? Just get my trusty ruler back out. It shows me right on the ruler. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it together just like that. Okay, now that was easy. Now this next one's a little tricky. Okay, but it's right here on the ruler. It says fold down again, keeping edges near arrow together. So here it's got the arrow and it's these edges right here. I'm keeping them together. And I'm folding that over. And that's it. That's all there is to that. Are you kidding now, me? Now, the reason we're making that extra fold, that last fold. The length of the ruler. Is because of the ruler. Right. The ruler won't fit otherwise. All right? So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all these folds. You want a nice, good, sharp blade in your rotary cutter for this. Is that one sharp? This one is sharp. We I say that, but sometimes in the demos, not your demos, but other demos, we go to pick up a uh, rotary cutter. Yeah. But, you know, it's been used and abused. Yeah. Well, this and stays like in solid. my room. This is my rotary cutter, so I know, <laughs> unless somebody sneaks in here and gets it, this has got my name on it. So then that's just scrap, okay? That's just to throw away. But... Now I'm going to turn my mat. What Why didn't you just pick up the fabric and turn it? Well, because it's all on <laughs> It's all folded the way I want it to. So it would get all off, yeah, off would, measurement. Yes, yes, yes. It would slip and slide around. So now I've I got like my it. arrows, and I don't even have to guess what line to look at. Because my arrows show me what line to look at. Right there, that line. See that? See if I scoot it down here? It wants me to go along that line right there. So I'm just putting my ruler right there. Again, I'm making sure it's not, I'm not doing a belly push. Look at the belly push. See, I don't have it off the edge so that I'm doing a belly push. You don't want to do that, okay? All right, here we go again. Got to find that line. And again, if I didn't have my arrows there, I'd be so tempted to go to that first line. But I got my arrows there. It shows me right where to go. Now, look at this. Yeah, Beautiful. Let's see what that is. 
Beautiful. Whoa. That is a nice strip. Beautiful strips. So as I keep on going. Don't strip it. Woo! Don't tell my husband. No. Okay. So I'm just going to lay that on there. And I am getting perfect two and a quarter inch strips every single time. I don't two think and this a quarter could be, strips. It couldn't be any could easier. could be any easier. But I could do this with any ruler, Dawn. Yes, you could. But does any ruler have the picture on how to fold? You know, there's so many videos out there where you make a tube and then you cut one and cut and cut. I mean, it's just like a jigsaw puzzle. I just never could deal with all that. I just, my brain is too uh, flighty to take in all that uh, crossword and cross hatch and all that. So origami. I, I, yeah, I can't do that origami stuff. The crane. So, um, I like this. I like it a lot. Now, well, with your arrows, there's nothing to look at. There's nothing to make there's sure you're going to be off. There's not any, you just, yeah, if I wanted to cut two inch, I'd put my arrows down there. If I wanted to cut two and a half, I'd bring my arrows right up to the edge. It looks like the back of the ruler even has Creative Grids classic non-slip. Oh, they all have uh, this. Yeah, right there. That's kind of got listen, a texture to it. Listen. See, that's kind of like slipping. that's kind of like um, sandpaper. Yeah, it's not slipping, but it's see through. It's clear. You can see right through it. You don't have to worry about having an actual piece of sandpaper on your um, ruler. Now, see how it's the perfect length. Mm -hmm. Perfect length. Was that due to you trimming it to the forty inches, or? Yeah, I think so. It it likes that forty inches. Now I'm just gonna flip that little tail out. Okay, it doesn't need to be folded. Got a little extra there. I'm still going to cut. Now, how long am I going to cut? Well, until I get strips that are kind of so puny that I don't really need them. And that's still a pretty good long strip. See that? So I get to use almost every single bit of my half yard. Look at that. Ruler just slipped on me. Stop and fix it. Don't just think it's going to fix itself. It doesn't fix itself. It's not going to get back in line. No, it's not. Now, if that's too little of a strip for you, I would stop here myself if I knew I had enough. But if you don't have enough and you have to use every little inch, keep on, just keep on cutting. But I'm, for me, I'm going to stop there. Now, this is another exciting element of why you fold it this way and why you cut it this way. Come to the sewing machine. I will meet you over there. Meet me right over here at the sewing machine, would you, Peter? Now, used to, I'm going to, I would uh, line these all up. Now, see how these all go the same direction? going to line those all up like that. Now look, that's a little tiny piece. I probably wouldn't use that. Okay. But I'm going to have enough here. I'm going to have enough to do a quilt. Now let me tell you what this binding is for. It's kind of a sad story. But it's kind of a good story too. My, um, I think he's my nephew. My sister's son. Would that be my nephew? My sister's son, my nephew, he brings me this quilt the other day. It's a quilt my mom made, all by hand. Quilted by hand, pieced by hand, cut out by hand, everything by hand. All the grandkids got one. See, he'd be her grandkid. Uh, and the binding was just tattered and gone, practically. So I'm going to have to unstitch my mom's hand stitches to take that binding off. Now that's going to be emotional. I can do it because I'm so proud of him for using it. You know, a lot of people give quilts. And if they're an art quilt, I can see preserving it, hanging it on the wall, whatever. But if it's a bed quilt and you're meant, the giver is giving it, to the person for their use 
so that they can feel the love that went into making that quilt. There's nothing more joyful than to see a quilt that's 30 years old. This quilt has to be 30 years old. Well, maybe not that old. Yeah. Yeah, it was probably made in the 90s. So 20 years old, maybe. Wow. This quilt has been washed, you know, I don't know, 50, 100 times. I don't know. He uses it. It's on his bed. And it was such a joy to see, you know, that he had gotten use out of it. And now it's time for the binding to be replaced. Because if you don't uh, do bias binding, and I'm not sure whether this was bias binding my mom put on there or not. So now I'm going to want to see this quilt. <laughs> You are? Yeah. Okay. Just because I want to see your mom's work. Okay, I'll bring it. Because I've week. seen your work, and it, I, it, your mom inspired you to quilt. Uh, you yeah. You learned from your mama? Kinda. So that'll be special. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got them all lined mine up. Mine are never, my edges are never the same when I cut my binding, and I do origami folds in mine. Do you really? I don't have the ruler, but I do different origami folds. you got to get this ruler, But the, the edges are all yeah. not the same. Yeah, this is because it's on true bias. Okay, do you always take your salvage off? No, that's why. That's why, because your salvage is still on there and it's all. So anyway, so taking that salvage off and making it uh, straight. So now I've got these and they're all going the same way. So now I'm gonna pick one up and I'm gonna pick the next one up. And instead of trying to get these to go together, like that, like I normally would just lay them on top of one another and sew across them or on the diagonal, uh -huh. or I would lay them like this uh -huh. and sew on the diagonal. Uh -huh. Look at this. What am I, what, what's happening? Look. I'm looking. It's all ready, ready to fold, I mean, to sew without any waist. Now I see you have an overlap. Why do you have an well, overlap? Well, because my quarter inch seam allowance. If I were to bring it right uh -huh. here uh -huh. and I would start when I folded it back, I'd have that. Edges won't line up. Oh, right. Okay. Because I have to allow for my quarter <clears throat> inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to eyeball that. I, I pretty much can tell what a quarter inch seam allowance is. But really all you're going to do is just on both sides kind of have it equal on both okay. sides. And then I'm going to bring it to my sew machine. Now do you remember last week how when I was putting the sashings on my quilt? Remember that? Mm -hmm. And my quilt came out an inch bigger than it was supposed to be. I was surprised. I was shocked. Yeah. I was me like, too. there's got to be something wrong with there's something. There's got to be something wrong Dawn somewhere. Because Dawn is the most accurate quilter because that I know. If it doesn't work out, there's something wrong. So, all night, I'm thinking, what in the world? What in the world? So, you what went home that world? night. So, I went home that night. I. You know, there's no use in me remeasuring it. I measured it here. I knew they were an eighth of an inch bigger than they were supposed to be. And I thought, well, it's got to be in my seam allowance. But my seam allowance looked really good. But then I got here this morning, and I noticed my guard is not on my quarter inch foot. So let's just take this off so I can show it to you. This edge right here is where my guard goes, my little guard, and that is actually a quarter of an inch. I was using this edge right here as my quarter inch. So for every seam I was taking, I was getting this eighth inch bigger. That's why my blocks measured eight and an eighth. So it's the... It's the mystery of the missing guard. It is the mystery of the missing guard. So I have no idea where my guard is, but we're going to find it before we go. It got on. lost in the move. It may have, but I think, it, uh, hopefully, I hope prayerfully, you have it. it is I in this bag. It. I prayerfully hope you have it in your bag. Me too, because if I don't, heads are going to roll. And I know where to start. You do? Yep. Just start with the last person that used your machine. And I know who that was. I know who that was, too. If you're watching and you use Dodd's machine. Okay, there's my guard. Now i got to find my little oh, screw. You got the guard. 
but the screw's not here. The little, the little screw that screws it on is not. Oh, look at that! Nuh uh. There it is. Nuh uh. This one must go to that. No, it goes to. Yeah, it goes to that. Okay. Okay, look, right there, I had put it in a bag. Look at that. So now I'm going to bring it over to my foot. I was <laughs> starting to sweat. Were you? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring it over my here gosh. and see, it's just going to fit right on there like that. I love that little foot. It's a nice one, all right. I wish I had that foot. I know where you can buy it. Did, would this foot fit your machine? No. Peter? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, you'll have to buy a whole new machine then. I know. I'll, have to, to get get the, the I'll have to get your 4120. Just to get the foot. Okay. Alrighty. Now I've got my quarter inch guide on. Do you know, do we know that I'm we sold? I'm cooking with gas now. We sold the last 4120 Saturday, by the way. Are you kidding me? Nope. And it's And it's not even close to Christmas. We had gotten a huge shipment in and we sold the last one Saturday. The oh my goodness. There's a funny story it's behind a nice that last machine. machine, too. What is it? Okay, before you tell us, look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sew that together. Nice. And then... Magic. Yep. And then that's, oh, that's my not, piece there. Wait, you're not even going to take it out of the machine, are you? No! <gasps> I no. love how fast this is. Heck I no. usually cut the thread and then do start ya? another thread. And then, do ya? Okay, oh this, this was the first off piece. Right, the first. So that screwed me up. Okay. Well, we can cut that at an angle. Yeah. Watch. We can pretend. Watch. We got scissors and rotary cutters and yeah. Watch cutting this. Mats. I if I was in home, I'd probably take that over to my cutting my rotary cutter. But since I'm right here at the sew machine, might as well just do it right here. And then <clears throat> now maybe it's this end I need. Yeah. There you go. Didn't even cut that off, but okay. Now I'm gonna put this on here like this. Not gonna take my um, fabric out of my machine. I love this. And I'm just gonna bring that right up. Oh my gosh. Raise that foot, put it under there. This is a game changer for sure. Is it really? Yeah. Cause you'll be able to sew all those ends super yeah, fast. Yeah, sure. And then I just take this one. Now you gotta flip it up. Okay? You've gotta flip it to the right side. Your right side is always on the bottom. Your wrong side is always on the top. Nope. Come on, Dawn. There we go. It's Monday. Well, I just gotta get used, cause see, I'm not used to doing it like this because my pieces are square on the, I mean, the way I used to do uh -huh. it, I I would always, you yep. know, make a diagonal seam. I remember that. Uh, it wouldn't be cut for me like this. I remember that. So I I, I am um, giving it some thought, a little extra thought, but you know what? It's going to work out because before I would lose two inches almost of fabric. Oh, dang. <clears throat> and we have a lot of strips there. So here I go, flipping this over. One flip, just one flip is all I'm doing. You're a fabric flipper. And then I'm putting this on. Leaving my quarter inch. And when I say leaving my quarter inch, what I mean is, if you get up right up here, Peter, mm -hmm. real close, is I want my seam to start right there. So that point is a quarter of an inch away. And I'll be able to tell that when I put it in my machine, if my needle hits right in that little V, I'll know that's a good quarter inch. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and sew all these on, okay? And I should have been cutting at every intersection, but I didn't. So now what happens? So now look. I'm going to take that to the sew machine. Well, first, before I take it to the sew machine, I mean to the ironing board, 
Look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut on an angle, cut those uh, ears, dog ears off, and I have perfectly straight all the way down. Wow. Look, all the way down. Wow. Keep going. Isn't that awesome? Keep going. All the way down. That took you no time at all. I know it. I know it. And we got that done in 30 minutes. With a lot of talking in between. With some talking in between, that's for sure. You know, when you learn how to make binding like this, you look you actually look forward to cutting out the binding I mean, and putting look it on at the this. quilt. Look you at how I mean? much binding I got. Like, I can't wait to get my quilt top quilted today so I can take it home and cut some binding with the new tool. You're gonna have to buy that ruler. Cause it's just awesome. I love it. I love how you don't have to go searching and searching and searching. And I was always buying a yard to cut bias binding. How so now, come? so I'd have a square piece of fabric, a yard and a quarter. Yard and a quarter. Yeah. So now you don't have to worry about that. I don't that. like wasting all that. Right, right. And it's all cut up in bias, you know, and so then you can't hardly use it for anything else. What's the last so, quilt you bound? Uh, actually, I bound a quilt just this morning, but I can't tell you about it because it's a. It's a for secret a sample. Yeah, it's for a client, so I can't tell you. Okay. But again, it's this... Um, let me put Creative it, Grids. Let me get my uh, board here so I can show it to you. Complicated Bias Binding Simplified. Bias Binding Simplified Creative Grids. Janice Pope. I love you, Janice Pope. Thanks, Janice. This is such a nice ruler. Genius Janice. And... Uh, I will be using this rule. I'm going to go home and I'm going to donate all my other rulers that look like this. Because I bet I do. I bet I have six rulers that are made for this very thing. Except for I never knew how to fold it. You know? I never knew how to fold it to use the ruler. So now it's right on the ruler. And it gives me three sizes. And that is just super terrific. Because sometimes I do cut a two and a half inch binding because if it's flannel, if it's a thick uh, batting, I'll need that little bit of extra, you see? So I am excited about this uh, product. I hope you are too. If you have trouble with bias binding, and Peter, why would you want to cut bias binding? Bias binding to me is magical. Let me tell you why. The very first quilt I made, I bought the batik fabric here at Always in Stitches. This was 10, 12 years ago. And um, somebody said, oh, well, I always just take the binding from, or the backing fabric and fold it up to the front from a binding. I'm uh -uh. like, oh, okay, sounds like a great idea. So then after I washed it and, you know, a year or two later, I noticed that it split all the way around the quilt. And I was like, I am so sad. I'm so depressed because my very first quilt, the binding cracked. Why did it do that? What happened? Well, now that I know about bias binding is the way the fabric structure lies, it crisscrosses every fold four times. Right. Because you fold it in half and you fold it in half again. We have right. four layers of protection where the fibers are actually crisscrossed and not just all lined up as if you went straight up the side of the fabric. Right. And, Let me show them. And because it's flexible... When I when the machine when the quilt gets uh, washed in the machine or it gets tossed around on the bed and all the corners get pulled and tugged, well the binding's not stiff, so it's not crease it's not like creasing a piece of paper over and over and over in the exact same place. It's flexible now, so the the binding moves with the quilt. Right. I love it. I'm sold on it. I will never quilt another quilt without bias binding unless it's a wall hanging. And it's, you know, 30 inches by used. 30 inches, yeah. and it's just going to sit there and look pretty. Yeah. Okay, so here are the threads, the length of the fabric. And then here are the threads, the width of the fabric. You know, they, they would be more even. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you're going to fold, if you cut the straight, straight of grain and you fold your binding like that, all it takes is those little bitty threads to get worn 
and it just completely shreds your binding along the edge. So this is the edge of my binding right here where this fold is. If those threads get worn, which they will, one thread, one little thread after another little thread gets worn, then the binding splits. But if you fold that on the bias, the threads multiply because now there's this thread, this thread, this, they're closer together and there's more of them and it's stronger. The bias uh, thread is stronger than the straight of grain thread. It takes much more wear to wear off all those X's because now if you see where the uh, fold is, there's little X's. That means there's two threads overlapping each other. So now it would have to break both of those threads all the way across for that binding to split. And if I can add something to that, because... What the, if I said no? Then I just wouldn't add anything. Well, you may add something. Go ahead. Please do. You're probably already going to say it. I'm, no. just, I'm just so excited about it. I want to be part of the conversation. Okay, good. Um, so Don will probably already, already have said this. But the thing that I can't get over with is if you take a piece of square fabric and you pull on it across the bias. Yes. It, it's like a rubber band. It has elasticity. Oh, it does. It does. It has a nice stretch. I don't have a piece here to show you. We cut you, it but, all. Yeah, we cut it all. So... When you have that, then when you have uh, the bias along the edge of the quilt, which gets all that wear and tear and abuse, well, instead of those fibers being rigid and not having flexibility and having elasticity, and... See how stretchy that is? It's going to move with the quilt. So it it's actually... It's stretchy both ways. It actually will stretch both ways as opposed to getting... Um, a lot of tension put on a fiber that doesn't move. Right. And end up causing stress and eventually cracking and breaking. Right. Right. Look at how much stretch there is to that. That Look, I've even stretched it out of shape. Look, it won't lay flat anymore because I've stretched and stretched and stretched. If you put some steam on it, it'll go right back. Yeah. Maybe some uh, best press, Some best too. press. Okay, so let me pick up my mess down here. That was my... Uh, New tool I wanted to show you. I'm not joking you. Now, I'm not just trying to sell you this ruler. I went in, I saw the video, okay, on, the, on the, my computer, and I came in and I said, Lenine, I gotta have this ruler. Please order me one of these rulers. So what does Lenine do? She says, if you like it, we're gonna get more than one. So she ordered a bunch. Now, a bunch to Lenine is six. <laughs> We might sell those out today or tomorrow. Those will be gone by this those afternoon. Those will be gone. But but we're gonna we're gonna start carrying this tool all the time, because I think it is, in Peter's words, a game changer. It's a game changer. It's a game okay, changer. Okay, I gotta I gotta tell the story. <laughs> you didn't do the story justice. Oh, okay. sorry. So my office is catty corner to Dawn's office. No walls. We don't no have walls. walls. It's open, and so you know I go back and forth walking across the hardwood floor. And so I'm coming back to my office, and I'm peeking over at seeing what Dawn's doing, and because Dawn's so cool, and I always want to see what she's doing. And I notice she's got a ruler pulled up on her screen, and I'm like, oh, what is that? Because I've never seen this shape before. So I come, I mean, running over, like staring over her shoulder, looking at her computer screen to see what it is she's got pulled up there. And I'm like, Dawn, what is that? And I mean, Dawn had only looked at it. She either saw the video. I or, watched the video okay, first. Okay, she had watched yeah. the video first and she had the ruler. I go, Dawn, what is that? And she goes, oh, it's a new ruler. I go, what kind of ruler? What does it do? And she goes, yeah. oh, it cuts by. I see these little pictures. Yeah. And I go, what? Yeah. And then so then uh, then I got Stephanie, which sits behind Dawn, going, well, what ruler is that? Because <laughs> yeah, Dawn, Stephanie loves all gadgets. Yeah, Stephanie, is, she's called the gadget girl. So then, then, um, then that leads uh, to Cappy, whose office is next to my office. 
and she has three walls. And then <laughs> she's like, what kind of ruler is that? What are you guys looking at? What's, what is that? And I go, oh, Dawn found this really cool new ruler that shows you the pictures on how to fold the bias and oh, how to get it. Oh, by the time it was over, everybody yeah. was a, around my desk looking at this awesome ruler. And we tried to, I was like, oh, let's do it. Let, print that screen. So we printed the picture of the ruler, but you couldn't see exactly <laughs> what. <laughs> the ruler was this big. <laughs> this big. So we got to get those rulers. We got to get them. We can't see the picture. We got to get them. So Cappy says, well, then if you want it, go ahead and, and order it. And I go, and she goes, well, I don't think I can. And I go, yeah, she can. I go, she's got the, the distributor site pulled up, and she's logged in. And then she goes, Cappy goes, well, go ahead and order it. And then Dawn, being the roof follower that she is, she won't cross the street unless it says walk. walk. She says, well, uh, I can't do that. I, no. I, I'm gonna, I, I gotta have to make... wait till Lenine gets here because yeah. she's the person that does the ordering. <laughs> yeah. So, so was that Friday? That was or Monday. No, that had to be Monday because we got them in on Friday. Okay. And now it's Monday again. And now it's Monday again. Yeah. So between between Mondays, Don had asked Lenine if it was okay to order, which I didn't even know. Yeah. All I do is I come into work this morning and I go to put my stuff in the refrigerator and I see Don with a tense a pensive face, you know, and I'm like, Is everything okay over there, Don? And she's like, Yeah. I'm cutting and my binding. She's so kind of like a kid with a new toy, just yeah. really intense and focused. Yeah. And so I go put myself in the fridge, and then I just go stand over her shoulder and watch every little single move that she makes. <laughs> and that's when I made the mistake of cutting a two inch. Let me show you. I've got it right here in my little trash bucket. I made the mistake of cutting two inches, two inch bindings, because I wasn't paying attention. See, see how much smaller this is two and a quarter and that's two that's because i didn't have my little arrows and i kept going to this first line i love these arrows for my rulers because they just make your eye go right to where you need to be and less mistakes i mean you know i cut like four strips too little so that was like a waste of fabric right there so uh and there's not much you can do with that you know what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to iron them in half and I'm going to use them as my leaders and enders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I don't want that to go to waste. But uh, anyway, now this two inch uh, that I cut, or this, uh, to get it to be 40 inches, I can cut one and a half inch strips out of that and put that in my one and a half inch strip drawer. Okay? And uh, Peter was asking me the other day, how do I store my scraps? And I'm going to bring you my, my little system that I have for that. And we'll talk about that next Monday. How's that? That's awesome. Okay. Well, I'll see you back at the sewing machine next Monday. Have a great week. Bye-bye.